still October uh, 29th, 23. Okay, I'm uploading the other video. Now, we're going to go back to this. When, uh, after I got well, um, I kept thinking it was October, but Halloween had already passed, so it was in November when Stranger made up that life. I got well in July. Why would you wait till November? Because Linda got caught following Tim and Katie, and they thought it was me. She came up to me at church. I was following him again. I got caught. I think they thought it was you. I'm sorry. Be careful. Well, four days later, he made up that shitty lie, and they got rid of me real quick. Okay? Um, and I honestly, I think they were going to kill me back then. And because it went completely wrong, and this is why they, they were, uh, uh, backed off real quick. Okay. He got rid of me real quick. Okay. Discredit me, get rid of me real quick. Well, okay. When he made up, uh, Linda came up to me on Wednesday and told me that at church. Here it is Sunday morning. Now, I'm still having headaches from going through withdrawal from the fentanyl patches. Okay? It took me months for it to stop. Um, and um, I'm at home. Now, Danny and Josh had been going out with Mike and Brandon Berkey. Uh, and their cousins, the Graver boys. Well, they were up in their 20s, the Gravers. They were buying the kids alcohol, and they would go out and get drunk and do horrible things, and Josh would come home and rat them out, and I'd ground them. And there's a lot of times Josh would rat them out, and he'd tell me, it's like, you're grounded. Oh, it's okay, because he didn't want to go out with them. But because they were Harold Strange's grandchildren, uh, Dave would say, oh, you can go back out with them. And then Josh would come home and tell us, like, well, you're grounded. It's okay, because he didn't want to go. They scared him. He's 16. Okay? And, um... Okay? So, uh... I didn't go to church that morning. My head was hurting. Danny comes in, and he looks at me, and he says, You're not my mother, and I don't have to listen to you. He's 14 years old. It's like, look... You're grounded. He screams and he runs out. Josh was in the basement. He comes running up and went, what on earth was that about? I said, I don't know. And so we got in the car and we went over to uh, Joy Men Mendez. Uh, her daughter, Heather, was dating Danny. And um, Josh was friends with Brasilia, her sister. And we were talking. And I said, well, Danny's been thinking about trying to kill herself. And I said, well, why? He said, well, Strange wants him to help destroy people in the church. He's 14. He's 14. And I said, destroy people in the church. He wants to kill himself. He said he'd rather die. And he's been talking about it. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's my baby. Okay, so we talk for a little bit. And I, I we start driving up and down the street. I'm looking for my kid. Well, we see Strange's... Uh, vehicle at the church and I said Josh I don't want him to know he's acting out until I find out what's going on with Danny sit out in the car well the, it's a glass door on the back door I knock on it they open it I step in he pins me to my face against the door he's like confess you were never sick I that's stupid it's a documented med medication error took me nine months to get one he even knew I was on he thought morphine patches and muscle relaxers and Dave already told him it was a medication Back in November of 202. And here it is. November of 2003. And it took me until July to get well. There was nothing wrong with me. But my muscles locked up. And those doctors falsely diagnosed me. And gave me the wrong prescription. And I swelled up from my feet to my brain. My heart got off. My thyroid got off. My adrenal gland got off. And I had so much water on me. My feet went from a 7.5 to 8.5 shoe wide. Uh, my knees were popping out of place. And everything's swelling and quit working. And I was dying from medical malpractice. And it took me nine months of getting off that medicine and getting on fentanyl. Fentanyl, they don't give fentanyl to fakers. My muscles were locked so tight from all the trauma, from all the surgeries, uh, that uh, I had to move them. And trying to move them was excruciating. 
and for them to unlock and then start building muscle tissue. And then trying to learn to walk on numb feet as the swelling went down. And as soon as I got off the medication, within less than two months, everything, the brain swelling was gone. My heart was fine. My thyroid was working. My adrenal gland was working. It was all induced from medical malpractice. That's why they encouraged Dave and I to sue him for almost killing me. It's a documented medication error. Okay, so he pins me to the back door. Confess you weren't sick. I would never do that. You're a spoiled little brat. Nobody likes in the church. That's like, well, you never did like me. He said, uh, you'll be lucky to see your kid again. He said, just the sight of you would hurt the church's children. You're Satan. Just looking at you. Now get off my property. Like I'm that ugly. Do you know when people from the church after that see me, they would look away. People that I've known since I was 10 wouldn't even look at me when I seen them. Okay, I go home. I go home and, or I go to Pizza Hut where Dave was working. I tell him I got a big mark on my face. I walk out of the church before that day. Josh is like watching me pinned to the back door. Okay. We go up and I get Dave. I tell him he's took Danny. He said, uh, Karen, I'll clock out and I'll come home and get you. We'll find out what's going on with Danny. Well, instead he goes over to that church. He comes home. He says, strength says you're Satan. And he does the same thing of just looking at me would hurt the church's shoulder. Not that I would, but just the sight of me because I'm so ugly. And, um, I, I said, where's Danny? He said, he said he'd give him back when he's done. I said, what do you mean give him back? I call my mom. She calls over there and says, you better be giving Danny back. They said, we'll give him back when he's done. I said, what do you mean? Well, I didn't get him back after church. He had kept him all day. Danny comes home. He lied, he lied, he lied. And he's shaking like he has cerebral palsy. Okay. The next, and he's like, Mom, I'm so sorry. He lied. The next morning, I get up, and I hear the car start. I go out, and it's Danny. He's 14. He's taking the car, and I'm running after him. And, uh, and as I'm screaming, he looks back, and then all of a sudden, I don't see Danny. And the car veers off, and he's passed out in the front seat. And it finally slows. He was aiming right for a tree. He passed out. I had to sit him up and push him over and get that car home. Okay? Had to have Josh up with me in the house with him. A little bit later, I hear the dirt bike start. And I go out. And it's him. And I'm running after him. And there was gravel on the road at Lennox that year. Thank God. He's had a bright bird telephone pole. And I'm running and I'm screaming. And he looks back. And he crashes before he had that telephone pole. And he got all scuffed up. We ended up in the crisis center. It's document. He told them that Strange took him. He starved him all day. He screamed at him on the pulpit until he passed out. Okay? And he did what he was told. And he didn't remember half the day. Okay, we ended up in the Child and Adolescent Center getting counseling with Georgine Vavusa, a Stark County social worker. He told her the same thing, okay? And he said, um, he said, uh, uh, she said, uh, um, she said, Karen, she said, these men that keep women covered up and they abuse them. She said, it's documented, they're child molesters. I just looked at her, I said, what? And she said, oh, they're documented, they're gay, and they deny their lust for men, and they abuse women. That are their womanizers. And they can't control their lust for other women, and so they hurt other women. And they hurt children. She said, and I started laughing, and she's like, Karen, it's not funny. It's documented in studies in jail. The people that end up in jail for hurting people, they have that wrong with them or they would have never touched you or your kid 
And that minister's got one, if not all three of them wrong with it. Okay? And he said, she said, and as far as that minister, she said, I'll tell you what, we can go back 20 years and I'll help you. And she said, and I'll put him in jail for taking Danny and pushing him that far and, and assaulting you. She said, I'll tell you what, I'll put him in jail. And she said, and we'll take care of him. Okay. She's, I talked to her again. She said, I called Dave. I wanted to know his part of the, him taking Danny. He kidnapped Danny. You do realize that. He kidnapped him. You withhold a child from its parent. It's kidnapping. The parent asks for it. You don't give it back. It's kidnapping. Him not feeding him all day. That's a form of torture. And screaming at him till he passed out. That's life in federal. You do realize that, right? Oh, yeah, she threatened to take care of anybody involved in that church for doing that. The Star County social workers did, and they documented it. Okay? Um, <sighs> she called Dave and said, I want to know your part of that minister taking Danny. He said, not without an attorney. And she made it quite clear that nothing better ever happened to Danny again. Or me. Okay? She told me, she said, Karen, I'll tell you what. She said, I wonder what Dave's going to do when Danny grows up. And then you need to make some decisions. Danny told a Stark County psychiatrist for the Child and Adolescent Center the same thing. He was treated for post-traumatic syndrome and bulimia for two years. That's why he doesn't have any teeth. He threw up so bad. He went down to 118 pounds at six foot tall. He looked like a skeleton. I had to go get a full-time job. Dave only made $18 an hour with no insurance. I had to go get a full-time job. I had to hire a babysitter to sit with him so he wouldn't try to kill himself. I had, and for that babysitter to make sure, try to get jello or pudding in him. Okay? I had to pay for babysitters for a 14-year-old so he wouldn't try to kill himself. I had, so that I took him to counseling three times a week to a psychiatrist. I did all that myself for him. I also got him a tutor for school, and we uh, met at a place for her to tutor him. I took care of Dave, while well, Dave did nothing. Okay. My mom, um, they, uh, that minister called and said, "I want to talk to you." She said, "I have nothing to say to you." Her tires started getting three-inch nails in them. Uh, then sharp objects. And they kept nailing her tires. She's way up in her 60s. Uh, she finally moved to Illinois. And she reported that to the police. And the domestic violence down there. They uh, documented it. That's where they said. We looked it up. Uh, Karen's mother's uh, tires were being nailed. When she moved. They said if she wouldn't have moved. They would have killed her. Okay. It's a very dangerous call. Now, that agent on a recorded line, like girls walked in Walmart, we looked it up. Will did say he met with the Vegas. He did. Absolutely, he did on a recorded line. And then where you come down to it, how could you even keep a straight face? I mean, how could you not tell they were playing you? I mean, think about what they said. How retarded and morons they look like. How big of morons they look like. We were devastated. 15 years ago, our kid got killed in a traffic accident. Mom, sorry for the loss. Did she have anything to do with it? No. But our minister said she was faking she was sick. And we're devastated over it. It's been 15 years so we had somebody drug beat and rape her. Psycho killer? How could you keep a straight face that, oh my God, you're devastated because somebody said something about somebody? 
Seriously? You're devastated over that. Are you joking me? Are you fucking kidding me? You're playing me, right? You're mental. Climb with mental insanity? You're devastated because somebody said somebody was faking? Are you joking? Think about that. You're playing me, right? Because see, that would take an IQ. How much they give them? See, it's coming down to how much they pay that agent off. In February of 19, they said they paid them off in the mall. See, that agent, I told you in that other recording where I called him. And we're going to, uh, I have to upload this. And then when the other one gets uploaded, I'll do from where I called the FBI. And then where the money disappeared. I'll do that again. And then you tell me how fucked up that agent is. You listen, like those girls said, it's got absolutely ridiculous. Will did say he met with them. Oh, heaven, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because I tell him, somebody told me of that church, and it's verified by the Norton Barberton police, was the agent that called me back. Dave told Danny to talk to him. That's why he called me a liar. It was him. I tell him about the guy that threatened to knife me, calls me a liar. I tell him he tried to kidnap me before Terry seen him. He killed Lori's family member, and he works with the human traffickers. He's their kidnapper. That's who he let go. I told him he tried to kidnap me before he calls me a liar. Start screaming about some damn camera above the bench, and I don't know. You don't know. You say you're a liar, and I'll put you in jail. Start screaming. It's like, fine, whatever. Ha. And then he's like, you say you were faking your sick before. It's a document of medication error, 2002. And then he involves himself in an insane lie of, do you know how? devastated those people were. I've had talk to them and how it it just ruined their life. You say it, you were faking and, blah, 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 and how I had a li I have talked to them. Oh yeah, he very much admits he talked to them. Very much. It's a recorded line. I said, but I was really sick. Now you see you're faking, you're sick or I won't help you. He admitted he talked to the bankers. Absolutely. On a recorded line. I was really sick. You either said I won't help you, I'm fine, whatever. Ha! Why would the FBI help a person like you? Well, I'm at the victim hunting and mocking a rape victim that's being scammed and you act like the dumbest moron playing with them. Because how could you even feel sorry for them? Somebody just said something about somebody and they were devastated. That's a wah, wah, wah. Are you playing me? You're grown-ass adults and you're saying somebody just said somebody was faking and you want them dead? Are you serious? What a pathetic reason. Seriously. Pathetic. Not even a brain cell in your head you could feel sorry for them. You couldn't even keep a straight face. You got to tell me you're actually devastated and it ruined your life because somebody said they were faking. After your kid got killed, are you joking? You're playing me, right? It's a comment. Hello? Why would the FBI help a person like you? They've tried to kill me, so. They're going to try to kill me, so. And then they yell out about the sexual predator that's been drugging me and raping me. Selling me on porn sites. Photoshopping me. Drugging me up and telling me to say stuff. Mocks me like jackasses. And I don't know what they're talking about. I said, who are you talking about? And what are you talking about? I still don't remember. And he, they're like, ha ha, she don't know. Laughing at a rape victim for the rapist scam here. Federal officers making fun of a rape victim that's being scammed by the sexual predator yelling out the rapist name that she's never met, laughing and mocking a rape victim, and laughing how I didn't know that offered to leave me, give me a real reason. I tell him about my brother-in-law, Craig, that died for the working for the government. Well, I take you somewhere and leave you, and then he offers me an informant program with 5000 a month and immunity for life, even when you tell. 
will always put it back as if it never happened. You can't be legally charged again for work in this case. And I meant to know, and you'll have that money to live on. I meant to know wrongdoing, and I'll take care of everything in the end. And uh, uh, then if you try to tell someone, unless you're crazy, he's already admitted he talked to Dave. Dave hired Pete on his own. Dave told Danny he hired him on his own. There was no court order. There was no police involved. It was a sexual predator, a human trafficker, running a human trafficking scam. How much did they pay him off? Like those girls said, we looked it up. He did say he met with them. This has got ridiculous. Absolutely.